How many wholesales have you done now? This year, probably do about 50 deals this year. And how much money do you think you've made flipping and wholesaling? This year, we're gonna do 400 right now. We have another 400 that's being flipped. Probably okay. close to like 2.5. How did you first start getting your deals? Some of them were on market and then some of them, I mean, anybody can go out there and just tell all your friends and family that you wanna buy real estate and you're gonna get at least one to two deals. And then how did you start to get more deals? How we started getting more deals really was keep Welcome to the Wealthy Investor Podcast. My name is Brian Davila. This is the number one podcast for real estate investors where we teach you how to scale your flipping, wholesaling, or buying rental business. And today we have someone very special on the podcast. His name is Charlie from Ohio. How's it going, baby? What's up, man? It's good to be here. Yeah, excited to have you on. Yes. Um, yeah, I know you're a young guy killing it as a uh, wholesaler and flipper. Um, I think you have some rentals too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we have about 30 units. Oh, rentals. you have 30 units yeah, already? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so for people who don't know who you are, can you give us like your quick backstory? Yeah, yeah, I mean, first off, I wanna say thank you for having me on, and this is my fifth time being to WealthCon. There and we go. really, I mean, I can't give you guys thanks enough, you and Ryan, for because sure. you started the program. For sure. Um, and two years ago, I didn't really have anything in real estate, and now it's it's blown up pretty well. And there we go. I that's can't good. give the credit to anybody but you guys. We helped somebody, so that's good. Yeah, for <laughs> real. But yeah, I'm from uh, Columbus, Ohio, right outside of it. Um, but basically, I began right out of high school. I was about 18. Um, I was working in the uh, electric field. Um, and I had a like off market triplex that my dad's buddy or something knew of. Um, and basically I was able to buy that for a pretty decent deal at the time. It didn't seem like a really good deal then, but now looking back, it was really good. Um, but basically they had two units rented out and then one unit needed a rehab. So I went in, rehabbed it and then lived in that one unit. Um, moved out of my parents and that's what sort of started my investing career is, um, I had two, three units, and two of the units were paying for more than more than my mortgage. So, oh, okay, got the cash flow bug. There you go. And you were how old? Uh, nineteen when we finished that one off. Dang! Yeah, so you started old. at nineteen years old. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Um. So you bought that first property. Um. You rented out all three units. Yeah. And then what did you do after that? Yeah. So right out of that, right after that, um followed sort of the Burr method there. So buy, rehab, rent, uh, refinance, repeat. Mm -hmm. um, I then went to a four unit that was fully occupied. So it was more of a turnkey buy, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was good at the time, but we put I put 20% down on that. And then after that, I did my first flip, which we ended up living in, me and my wife. Um, and basically we had to move in when we didn't even have a kitchen or a bathroom. And, <laughs> Just made it work, but uh, that deal went really well. We sold it like 18 months after after we finished up the rehab. Mm. Um, but yeah, bought that one for like 150 and ended up selling it for 375 after we put about 90K into it. Dang, okay, yeah. how did how did you get like, how were you getting the money to buy all these deals? Um, so, I mean, I grew up on a farm and uh, my parents owned a greenhouse, so they're pretty entrepreneurial, but I mean, I've worked pretty much my entire life. And then high school, I actually didn't really go to high school. I just took online classes Mm. through like a college, which they allowed. Mm -hmm. um, so got to work like full time and go to college. So I had quite a bit saved up, but um, after those first two, I didn't really have any funds left. So that's when I had to start really think creatively, start flipping to get some active income. Yeah. Um, Cause it definitely takes money to buy real estate. Yeah. If you're gonna buy turnkey. So how did you get into flipping and wholesaling and like how many flips and wholesales have you done now? Yeah, so uh, like I was saying, I think I joined your guys' program like two, two and a half years ago, but basically for before that, I was flipping a couple houses a year um, and then working a full-time job and mm -hmm. that didn't really seem feasible and I was just working a ton of hours, working at the flips at night. Got to learn all the construction side though during that. Oh, so you were actually yeah, doing, I was the doing it all myself. Dang, yeah. yeah. That's so, crazy. but that was really good because now we're doing, we'll do, I don't know, we'll do around fifty flips this year. Dang, um, and we have good crews running, but I'm able to know everything that the contractor's talking about and really. I'm yeah. good on the construction side. Got it. Um, so, but I didn't really know anything about the wholesaling or the money side. So that's when I got into your program. Um, and yeah, that's when I figured out what an assignment contract was, all that stuff. But yeah. yeah how it's been crazy. How many wholesales have you done now, you think? Um, so it's probably about 50 wholesales from okay. last year. But this year, I mean, we're probably going to do 70% of those. Okay. Yeah. So we'll probably do about 50 deals this year. Total 50 deals flips and wholesales, yeah. Got it. So we've done okay. 25 so far this year. Okay. And we have another 12 
in process getting flipped right now. Got it. So are you trying to keep it like 50, 50, like half wholesale, half flips? Um, so my goal was to get a little more wholesale heavy just cause, uh, when the market interest rates did go up, um, mm -hmm. you know, the tide sort of went out. Yeah. You could see a little more, but, uh, lost a little bit of money then, but mm -hmm. I like the wholesale side just cause you're a lot less liquidity in, in, in the deal. Yeah. A lot less risky. Um, but I do like the flipping side. It, it produces a lot of money. So yeah, like 50, 50 or 40, 60. Yeah. And how much money do you think you've made flipping and wholesaling? Um, I mean, a decent amount. Uh, in my rental portfolio, I think the 30 units is about $3 million, Yeah. Um, and I've equity of about – I have LTV about 60% to that. So okay. I got a little over a million in equity on that end. Uh -huh. And then this year we're going to do close to seven figures. We're at 400 right now. And yeah. we have another 400 that's being flipped and is already assigned. Dang. So. Okay. We should get really close to the seven figures. Seven one. figures. So it's probably okay. close to like 2.5. 2.5? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so let's go back. When did you start to like scale your flipping and wholesaling? Yeah, so it was as soon as I jumped into to Wealthy Investor, but uh, quit my job and then started flipping full time. Um, and that's when I saw that you need to go direct to seller to really – um, be able to wholesale and flip effectively. Yeah. And that's sort of why I do sort of everything. Mm. So I'm act also like a realtor, so I'll sell my deals on the MLS as well. Oh, that's good. So I sort of have my feet in everything, which isn't great at times, but I feel really good uh, about the stabilization of like the market. Yeah. So if one side goes down, I can bump up the other side and yeah. vice versa. Yeah. Um, so that's why I try and do a little bit of everything. That's crazy because I didn't, I didn't even know all that about you. So like I, I buy rentals. I also have a license in California. And then I wholesale, then I mm -hmm. flip. Yeah, and I know pretty similar. Yeah, 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 that's that's good. Yeah, and then especially with you being so young, you're what twenty three right now. Yep. Yeah, so that's really good yeah. that you're getting so much experience at your age. Yeah. No. Yeah, and yeah, the program just opened up my eyes to you know how much you can actually make. Um, yeah. And what making a lot of money actually is. Yeah, uh, yeah. The original goal was just to pretty much replace my sixty grand a year yeah. electrician career that I was pursuing mm -hmm. uh, and quickly figured out, you know, that one flip could, could take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when scaling and, you know, what I want to do is not just make millions of dollars. I want to make the millions of dollars, but put it into real estate mm -hmm. as sort of a piggy bank. So that's yeah. sort of my model is I'll flip three or four and I try and keep the best one. Mm. Um, but yeah, another thing I've learned this year is, you know, I'm only getting deals in contract that I would flip myself. Um, that was a big learning curve when I first started. I just wanted a deal. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's like, um, if I'm selling you this deal, if it doesn't close, I'm going to flip it myself and make money. So mm. I feel like I have backup plans everywhere. So. Got it. Okay, so let's talk about the scaling of the business. So you you had your job, and then you were flipping. Mm -hmm. How were you? How did you first start getting your deals? So I first started getting my deals. Some of them were on market, and then mm -hmm. some of them – I mean, anybody can go out there and just tell everybody, all your friends and family that you want to buy real estate and you're going to get at least one to two deals. So that mm -hmm. was my first year, mm -hmm. year and a half. Yeah. Um, a couple off market deals that were friends of mine, knew somebody, and then a couple off market deal or on market deals. So that, that first flip I did was on market. Uh -huh. Um, and that was right before it really blew up in 2020. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And then, so on market and then referrals. Mm -hmm. And then how did you start to get more deals? Yeah, so how we started getting more deals um, really was keep network, like network marketing. So mm -hmm. go to meetups, get all those off-market deals from other wholesalers. So that's oh, always okay. been a really big one. Yeah. Um, but now in the past 12 months, we've brought on Facebook ads. Um, mm -hmm. And now we're doing PPL in the past six months. Yeah. Um, so we're spending, I think, close to 12 grand a month now. Mm -hmm. And that's probably only in the past three months. We probably were closer to like five or six in the previous 12 months. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, now we're doing, it's about, uh, 3,500 on Facebook and then others PPL okay. and the PPL is getting about a three X return. And then the fake Facebook ads is, is really good. It's like 12, 12. So it's going to get ramped up, but it is pretty sporadic too. So how much do you spend on Facebook and then how much do you normally like make? Um, so I mean, on Facebook, yeah. just on Facebook, just on Facebook. Um, so we spent thirty five hundred um, mm -hmm. per month. So that'll yeah. be. Uh, That's all right. Thirty five hundred. Be a like month. twenty, twenty two, twenty thousand. 
is what you normally make? No, no, no. That's how much we probably spent in the past six months. Okay. And on that, we've made about 120, 150. Okay. So you yeah. spent 20K and then that made you 100K yeah. doing Facebook ads. Yeah. Got it. And then a couple of those I actually kept as rentals. So I have okay. equity in that. So Got it. I mean, it's probably close to like two, 250. 250K. Yeah. Got it. What about how much do you spend on PPL and then what does that normally make? Like a PPL, month? so the past three months I've spent 10 grand each. Yeah. Um, and we're going to make about, um, we're a little over 150. Right okay. Now. Yeah. So you spent 30 grand to make 150. Yeah. Grand. And that doesn't include like the deals that we still have, are following up on. And we just got two signed up this week from follow ups. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be a lot more than that if you look at it from like a six month span. Got it. Okay. So that was your marketing. So PPL, wholesalers, um, Facebook. Um, anything else for marketing? No, another, I mean, a great one is wholesalers. That's, that's one. A lot of people don't pursue hard, but I yeah. have one wholesaler in my area that brings me all his deals first. Yeah. And we've made a lot of money together for sure. I paid him probably over 300 K in the past 12 months. Got it. All in Columbus, uh, outside, like any, anything outside, like hour of Columbus. Got yeah. it. So we'll do all around. So I like, I like the outer markets of Columbus because Columbus is so hot. Yeah. So, like, my little town, Marysville, or little towns around that, I love a lot because I'm really local to the area. I'm a realtor. I know most of the market there. Yeah. Um, and I'm able to take down the deals a lot faster than anybody else. Got it. So, how do people go about finding wholesalers? And then, how do you find good wholesalers? Because I think yeah. most beginner people, what they do is they go out, they meet someone from New Western or one of these big mm -hmm. wholesale companies, and then they're like, oh, they never send good deals, and they're so competitive but they never get like the good yeah. wholesalers that bring deals. Yeah, I mean, I'd say the biggest thing with that is you gotta create a relationship with the wholesaler. Mm. Um, so, I mean, a lot of these bigger ones are definitely just dispo and it's straight out into the email, but the ones you want into like an email spam of like thousands of people, buyers, yeah. what you really want is like the wholesalers that are just sending it to a few people in mm -hmm. the beginning. And yeah. then, you know, that's what we'll do. So we'll send it to our first like five buyers that we know it's gonna buy the deal. Uh huh. And then, I mean, if we can't, we'll send it out. But yeah. it's probably not a good deal at that point. But, I mean, really creating a relationship with, like, upcoming wholesalers because mm -hmm. they're going to get better, um, I'd say is really where you want to start. Yep. Um, because the, the good ones already have their buyers. They're probably not going to send you a deal unless they have it right there. But then just following up with them is another big thing. So how do you find these new wholesalers? Uh, going to meetups. Uh, let your local meetups would probably be the best. Your Facebook groups. Um I mean, that's going to be your most. The guy that is my main guy I got from a referral, a referral who knew a guy who was starting to wholesale and then mm. ended up really popping. He doesn't really know any big buyers, so yeah, um, that's <laughs> where you get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of luck. I think, um, yeah, that's how I got a lot of my f deals in the beginning was just networking with, like, these young wholesalers that are out there cold calling and doing the hard work, driving for dollars and all yeah. that crap, and then – you know, creating that relationship, offering to help pay whatever I could help pay for. Um, even if I pay for their dialer or like some yeah. data that costs 1500 bucks, but I get a flip that makes me $30,000 yeah. or more. It's worth it. Yeah, no, for sure. I have, especially if you like get them a gift after too, they just, just building a relationship with someone and actually having the relationship. But yeah, I mean, right now when I first started, it was all about trying to find the money for the deal. Yeah. Um, but now it's about finding the deal because if you have a deal, you're going to find the funding or you'll be able to wholesale it. So, yeah. What do you, what would you say to people who are like young and they want to get into real estate? Cause I think I looked at the percentages, like 30% of the people that watch this show are like between 18 and like 24. Yeah. I guess it sort of starts with what you actually want to do. Like what you're trying to do. Are you trying to build up rentals or are you trying to just, you know, make a million dollars a year mm -hmm. so that really figuring out exactly what you're trying to do um but i mean like i started i'm trying to build up rentals um mm -hmm. so i mean just getting started i mean you just need to use all the resources like you guys join a, a group like you guys obviously um but i mean really just figuring out your numbers how to make a deal work and then just jumping in mm. um 
and maybe joining with somebody else who's already doing it. I yeah. mean, that would be a really good education. I had mm -hmm. to learn it all pretty much myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely starting with a group like mine, I mean, yeah. would be a good starting point. Definitely learn the ropes. What about like, did you have any struggles in the beginning because you were so young? Yeah, no, I mean, for sure. I had like 12 tenants when I was 19 and <laughs> I was sort of freaking out. <laughs> but I mean, a lot of them were like over 60 and oh they didn't want to listen to me. But, and I mean, that's where I learned like, I don't want to be a landlord, first of all. But I mean, also you just can't take like junk from people because they'll yeah. just use you. <laughs> yeah. They just wanted every little thing done, like, because they knew I was young and would do mm. whatever. Um, but quickly, you got to separate the business from you yeah. know, your personal life, for sure. What about, like, how much do you make from your rentals? Um, so I I did it last. We've added a few since then. Mm -hmm. But it's um, it's only about 6 or 7K a month is That's pure really cash good. flow. That's really good. Yeah. 6 or 7K is, like, a solid it's amount. It's about 200, 200 uh, a unit. A uh, two hundred a door. That's what I aim for, yeah. And then are most of these rentals like single family, or are they all? Oh uh, no, most of them are uh, two to four units. Two to four units. Yeah. I have a couple single families, but I try and sell those. So everything. Do you have anything above four units or no? No, no. That's okay. my goal this year. I want to get a twelve unit something, twelve unit or above okay. by the end of the year. Okay. So some of your deals. Yeah. There yeah. we go. But uh, but yeah, no, that's the goal. But I like small multifamily for sure because it. it's a uh, easy entry point. Um. And they also increase with the single family market. Mm. Not like you're going to do on the commercial, which I'm not, I don't have a ton of knowledge on because I'm not yeah. in the field, but the single mm. family is going to keep going up. So what do you think as far as like, how do you find these like two to four units that you're like burring out and cash flowing? Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, I was also like doing a lot of driving for dollars. So like my little mm. town just started out by, you know, walking the neighborhood or driving the neighborhood. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of old people, like, 50 year old plus that don't really know what their property is worth and their old landlords mm -hmm. and honestly they just want to get rid of it because it needs a giant rehab anyways <laughs> um so i mean that's a good list to target start driving yeah. around look at the dilapidated ones and yeah call the owners i mean i was door knock mm -hmm. i was driving and door knocking on these owners that own really? like five or more yeah that own five or more like five or more properties how would you know that they own that much um because you can go to the auditor's website and oh. check out so you would walk around. Let's just say you saw a duplex. Yeah. Like walk me through what would you do? So if you see a duplex, duplex property, duplex, you want whatever. It, yeah. um, get the address and then uh -huh. you can go into your county auditor's website or Zillow. Uh -huh. um, go into there and it shows you the name of the owner. Okay. And a lot of the small mom and pop owners are just have it in their name. They don't have an LLC or anything. Yeah. And then from there, you can skip trace them, get their number, or you can just look their name up on the county, or county auditor's website, and it'll show you all the properties they own. Oh, okay. If you and just those, I know, are really, really good leads because they might sell me a few properties. You know what I'm saying? Got it. Okay. And you've done that, and it worked for you? Yeah, not for sure. Where would you skip trace them? Uh, I mean, like white pages or true people searches free. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's thousands of places. Uh, skip yeah. Trace. So you pretty much just broke down how someone could start buying properties below market value and yeah. building their rental portfolio yeah. for free. Yeah. So for go sure. to the properties, get the address, go to white pages, which is free, mm -hmm. call them, mm -hmm. and then you're making them an offer. Yeah. How are you getting loans so young? Um, so in the beginning, I had a W-2, so that helped. Okay. Um, I think on the first one, I even had my parents co-sign because my credit score wasn't really even a thing yeah. then. Um, <laughs> but now I'm doing all DSCR. Oh, okay. Um, but back then, you could still do DSCR now yeah. um, as a young person. I just didn't even know about it. <coughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, once you build it up. Uh, See you to get. Yeah. Where do you get your DSCR loans from? Uh, I get it through a broker. A okay. lot of them are like United Wholesale Mortgage. Oh, they sell wow. It off. Oh, I didn't know United Wholesale Mortgage does DSCR loans. Yeah. That's they're, interesting. They're like a point higher than most of them, but yeah. I'll pay like a point. And then uh, I think I have a couple at like 8 or 9%, but they still cash flow 200 Yeah. And that's on rates for like 8 So, so are it's you not really bad. Are you buying them hard money and then fixing them up and then doing a DSCR, or you're just buying them as a DSCR and then no, fixing them up? No. I always buy them with either private money or hard money, and then I'll refinance them oh, with okay. DSCR. Got yeah, it. Yeah, because that's long term. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Like, how many rentals are you trying to get to? Um, I'm not really trying to get to a number. I'm trying to stabilize the wholesale side right now. But oh, I'm just trying okay. to keep every 
third or fourth one. Got um, it. So I try not to stay too crazy liquid. Um, Got just it. Just keep dumping it into rentals. But if a property comes out, like we chose two this month or two duplexes, um, we're buying them for 150 each. And then we're going to put about 100 to 120 in it. Okay. So I have two, 250 to 270 in it. And those yeah. are going to appraise for 450 Yeah. I'm going to take 75% of that, get some cash back. Yeah. And still have those rentals cash flowing at least 200 a month. And how did you get those rentals? So those were off uh, Facebook ads and PPO. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then what do you think? How are you finding your construction crews? Uh, yeah. So that's something I started in 2020 as well. When mm -hmm. I left my job, I started doing flips for out of state investors. So a lot of California guys, mm -hmm. Oregon. So we've probably done over, I think I've done over 100 projects for them. Really? Um, yeah, just like uh, when the market was really hot, California guys just buying whatever they could get their hands on yeah. and doing rehabs on them. I but I, I learned quickly that. that that was not – I wish I would have done that personally, but I yeah. learned quickly that the construction side is not where you make too much money, especially when you're doing it for people who are uh, doing flips or keeping them as rentals because <coughs> they want the cheapest finishes and they don't want to pay you anything, Yeah, which completely makes sense. But through that, doing 100 projects, we probably did $2 million in our first year. Um, <coughs> I've been able to build up quite a good uh, construction crew. So I got two project managers that have been with me for like two plus years at this point. Mm. And then we have about three crews that completely stay with me. So those are plumbers, electricians, and then framers and drywallers. Oh, so you have a whole, you have all your crews built out. Yeah. And they, right. they're, those are 1099, but they're all with me. The project managers are hourly, but. <coughs> and th are they all licensed? I'm licensed. So oh, you're I'm licensed? Licen yeah, I took the exam and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know you were a licensed contractor. Yeah, no, it's construction's my game. So, Dang. the construction side, I got set. So, that's where I came to you guys for the wholesaling. For the wholesaling. Yeah. So, you're, how old are you again? 23. So, you're 23, a general contractor, yeah. 30 rentals, yeah, yeah, yeah. flipping and wholesaling. Yeah. That's crazy. Completely licensed in the state of Ohio. And a Christian. Yeah. Amen, yeah. brother. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know you did all that, to be honest. Yeah. It's, um, been, a, it's been a fast five yeah, years. You don't and I almost got three kids. So. And in a month, I'll kids. our third. This guy's on fire right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay, so you're a general contractor. If, if someone's looking to find good crews, where do they go? And then how much are you typically paying for, like, all the construction? How much am I paying for all the construction? Yeah, well, let's go first. Where do you find your good so crews? So, good crews. Um, I have found some of my best guys at Home Depot and Lowe's when I used to go get material every day. Okay? And from there, when I, you find the good guys, they know other good guys. Hmm. How, do you, how do you, like, do you just walk up to contractors yeah, in Home Depot? I mean, I was brave. I was like, hey, what's up? What do you do? <laughs> I'm like, tile. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Show me some pictures of a job. Yeah. And I'll show you, and you get them, give them a chance. If they mess up, uh -huh. then you don't use them again. If they're good, <laughs> um, I mean, I keep them so busy now, they stay with me. Mm. Um, and they they normally know another trade or another tiler that's good. Yeah. Um, but basically, I've just built out that way from networks of them. Um, but my first few just got them from Lowe's and Home Depot, mm. honestly. Got it. Because okay. the good ones are normally being used. You're not going to take the good ones from another job site. Also, I think I might have gotten one from going to somebody else's job site and taking. Oh, it. you. Yeah. Was yeah. it Tiffany and Josh? High? No. no. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Didn't forget it. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I think uh, people do lose good ones though. Because what my I had a crew in California that he would work on mines part time, and then he was working on like this other big developer guy's crap. Mm -hmm. And then he would always, like, complain, like, oh, this guy's not paying, this guy's not this. And I would always tell him, like, dude, I pay because my stuff was taking forever. Yeah, like, yeah. so I'm like, hey, bro, like, I pay. I pay you. I pay you in advance. I pay you in advance. And then he ended up leaving him and coming with me. And that was, yeah. like, my main crew right yeah. now that I, I yeah. got lucky that I have. Yeah. But I wouldn't um, pay anybody in advance, though. Well, not paying in advance. Yeah. I'm not paying him, like, a large advance. Yeah, yeah. But I'm. Like when he's like, "Hey, I need 5K," I, I give it to him. Yeah. It's not yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I know. Yeah. And I, like you can get burned on that as well. Oh, like when I first started, I was like 20, uh -huh. and they just say, "Hey, I did this job for you. I need like 10K." And I just pay him. I don't even like look at the job. I wouldn't think about really what it was. Dang. So I got ripped off a lot, but I mean the learning lessons that I built in that that time yeah. period are yeah are really good. Yeah. So now it's really like good. we're gonna check your work. You're probably not gonna get paid for another week. 
Oh. Yeah. So I make everybody send me what they want get to get paid for, and then mm-hmm. that's going to take another. That's going to take till the next Friday mm-hmm. for you to actually get paid. Why that do way you do we that? can see their work. We can set up draws in that amount of time. Uh, just so you know what money is going to be exiting out. Got that it. week. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you're not just having 20 people say you want 20 grand a day. Yeah. That that annoys me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what else? So okay, so can we break down how much everything costs when you flip a house, like roof? Yeah. So um, I mean, I used to go by like the 5K rule, so every line item was around 5K. <laughs> But what that doesn't freak? that doesn't I've apply. Never heard of that. No, it used to be good. Like paint, five k. <laughs> yeah. Flooring, five k. <5K, laughs> okay. And everything would be a little less yeah. or a little more. Framing, five k. Yeah. It would be pretty good. But like to do a gut in Columbus right now, we're spending about one hundred fifty to one hundred eighty k for Jeez. everything. And how much is that a, a square foot normally? Do you um, know? that's like uh, forty five uh, to fifty five. Yeah, it's right around there. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's definitely expensive, but yeah. We've really got our numbers down now. So how much does a roof cost? Roof costs, I mean, it depends on the size of the roof. But anywhere yeah. from like 8 to 12K, I just budget for. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, flooring, another 10K. Paint, another 10K mm. on average. Paint, that's Paint's inside and outside. Paint's the door right now. That's probably gone up like 200% mm. just the cost of material. Got um, it. But, yeah. Okay. What about... Um, Okay, so that was construction. We talked about how you're getting your leads. So let's talk about wholesaling. Mm-hmm. So you're doing PPC, I'm sorry, PPL. Mm-hmm. Who do you use for PPL? Uh, so PPO, uh, the best one's Lead Zolo. Yeah. Uh, but that gives you the fewest amount of leads because okay. it, it goes in a circle to yeah. whoever's in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, the next best one has been Property Leads. And then okay. the third one. We just got our first deal on after quite a bit of spin is I speed delete. Oh, I speed delete. Did yeah. you try like Y Lobo or something like that? No, I haven't tried that yet. Okay, got it. Um, <coughs> and then just so people, if people don't know what PPL is, can you explain it? Yeah, it's paper lead. So basically, you're just paying three to five hundred dollars, depending on the area, for one lead. Um, yeah. And that could be a person just trying to sell their house for retail, or um, it could be a really distressed homeowner that needs your help. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's about one and twelve for me. Yeah, so I'll close one and twelve leads. Uh, okay. And are you doing acquisitions or someone else? Yeah, doing so that? I'm sole acquisitions right now. Oh, okay. uh, but we do have our first guy uh, starting Coming up on. next month. So what sorry, happened to the acquisition guy that you have? So he does deals with us as well, but he oh. has his own company. But we'll pay him twenty five percent of the uh, deal. Okay. If it's something that we bring in, I bring in and give the info to him on. Got it. Yeah. Okay. How do you determine what you give him and what you don't? If give I don't him? have time. Oh, okay. So yeah. if you're just busy, you just send him the yeah. leads. If, yeah, yeah. Le- instant a lead comes in, it needs to be hit. So if yeah. I ain't got time, I'll send it to him. Got it. Okay. Um, and then, like, what's your average wholesale fee? So our average wholesale fee is right around like the fourteen thousand five hundred to okay. like sixteen thousand mark. Got it. And then yeah. our average flips. Um, I'd underwrite it to make at least thirty, or I won't take it on. Mm-hmm. The average flips probably around like twenty eight. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Um, and then your average profit a door is 200. Um, what about dispositions? Like how are you dispoing your deals? Uh, so dispositions, um, I built up a good buyer list by all the networking events that I did used to go to, but mm-hmm. Facebook groups is really good to find your good buyers. Mm-hmm. Um, and once you sort of dispo through that, I'll just say, Hey, who wants a deal? for this amount of profit in this area or this mm-hmm. zip code. Mm-hmm. And then whoever replies, they're probably not going to be legit, but you're going to find one or two people in that. Mm-hmm. And then you get, keep making the list a little smaller. And then you keep really getting the good buyers and then you create a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. Um, so now, I mean, once I take down the deal, I know who, exa- who exactly is buying in that area, mm-hmm. if, how much they're looking for for it. So I pretty much know everything and I know who I'm sending the deal to right when I get it in the contract, unless I'm going to keep it myself. Got it. Okay. Um, so right now we're trying, we saw that wholesaler that's really good. So we're flipping all the ones that he buys. Yeah. And we'll daisy chain a couple of them every once in a while. Um, but then everything we bring on internally, I normally am uh, dispoing. So what does what your wholesale operation look like now? So it's like you got you. So I have three VAs on the back end that are doing most of my like office work, headache work. That just takes a really long time. Um, but I have a, also have a, a lead setter VA, 
Mm. So they're going back through all my leads, calling them, texting them constantly to try and produce new. Got it. And how much do you pay that VA setter? Uh, I pay him six, and then I pay my main admin uh, like five. And then I have another one who does some transaction coordination. Mm. Uh, I pay her four. Four dollars an hour. So like total a month is like less than 3K. Yeah, all in. I mean, we're spending a lot more than we did now, but it's probably like 15K a month. 15k um, a but month. I mean, well, that's with marketing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. With everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you're doing dispo and main acquisition, so you're doing pretty. You're doing a lot. Yeah, our construction side is pretty solid, just because we've done so many projects now. They sort of know what to expect. <coughs> um, go mm-hmm. over it with them before the job starts. Try yeah. not to stop in there. Yeah. Uh, like once a week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, it's definitely burning a lot of a lot of fuel right now from myself. Yeah. What do you think as far as um, what's your biggest bottleneck right now in your business? It's definitely acquisitions. Um, bringing on, because we're losing a lot of leads just because I'm like the only guy. Mm. Um, so we're bringing on that new guy. But uh, but that'll be, that's my largest bottleneck just because we're always looking for more deals. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're definitely losing deals right now just because I can't follow up with everybody correctly. Got it. Okay. So if you're in Columbus, Ohio, and you need a sales job, yeah, hit them up. Let's go. Yeah, you probably need two salespeople because y- yeah. you're hiring one, but you probably need two just in case yeah. this one doesn't we'll work. We'll bring out. on three or four. There we go. Yeah, get some salespeople. Yeah. Um, I guess besides that, what do you think? What else do you feel like your business needs? What does it need? Yeah. Um, definitely just getting our uh, acquisition process narrowed down, and then, um, like we talked about earlier, but. We're probably going to s- add PPC mm-hmm. um, just because most of those PPL leads are coming from a PPC campaign. And I just want to make sure that the cost can't fluctuate like crazy because right now the PPL providers could just shut off their lights mm-hmm. and then I'd be out that lead mm-hmm. source. Um, so just making sure that is consistent every month is really what I'm trying to do in the next 12 months. Yeah. What, what, like how much are you willing to spend on PPC now? Um, I mean, if we weren't doing PPL, I'd ten grand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. but are you, but you're, you're gonna keep doing PPL. Yeah. So what do you I'm think gonna you're gonna start? PPL. I mean, we'll probably start at seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, I don't know what else. I feel like we went through everything super fast. Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, on the family side, what uh, what are you doing to balance your young kids? Um. Well, for me. I, d- I don't really ever work past five, so I feel like that really helps. Yeah. Um, and then I don't really have to be here at, like, any time. So, like, yesterday and the day before, I was dropping my kids off at their camp. Mm-hmm. I could drop them off at school. I could um, – I just when you have, c- like, control over your schedule, it's kind of like you can yeah. do whatever you want. No, I agree on that. And that's why I connected with Ryan and really bought the program in the yeah. beginning was because you guys were more family oriented on yeah. that side. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, my day is like nine to three or four. Yeah. And maybe shorter than that if I don't go in at nine. But then I'll yeah. try and work like an hour or two in the evenings after the kids are asleep. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think as far as like mindset wise? Like what are your some of your strengths and challenges? Uh, Yeah. I mean, uh, my strengths are... I'd say a lot like Ryan's, like I don't mm-hmm. really care. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm probably not the most like sympathetic person. <laughs> so I'd say that's pretty <laughs> sh- strong and obviously a weak point on yeah. one side, yeah. but really strong in like the construction side, dealing with contractors, oh, yeah. dealing with sellers, dealing mm-hmm. with anybody. I don't really <laughs> let yeah. somebody affect how I feel. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah. But I'd say that's also a weakness on the leadership aspect as well because mm-hmm. I need to connect with my employees more yeah for sure yeah um but that's definitely a good strength and a pretty big weakness as well how does uh ryan do that on the sympathy side is or is it just a weakness um i think so it's 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 interesting because like i know ryan very personally so i know where his heart's at mm-hmm. um but then we'll have some team members here that are like dude ryan doesn't talk to me and it's like it's not that he's like yeah. not trying to talk to you he's, just, it's personal. he's like doing crap you yeah. know what i'm saying and it's weird, too, when it's, like, a grown man that will complain about yeah. it. And it's, like, dude, like, we've had construction people in here who are, like, Ryan walked <laughs> by me and just said hi and walked by. And it's, like, what do you want him to yeah. do, bro? So like, my biggest thing right now is responding to phone calls and texts. Mm. So I'll just get, like, a 1,000 a day. But 
And my you unread do? text message is like a thousand, like thirteen hundred. Who's texting you? Just the wholesalers, mm. um, a bunch of contractors. Okay. Um, sellers, buyers, everybody. Oh, okay. um, and if I'm, it's not like active deal, I'm not, or like even family members, I'm not, yeah. I'm either not going to see it cause yeah. it gets blown up in 10 yeah. seconds, but yeah, then people get really mad at me yeah. uh, cause I just don't respond. And if they call me, I'm probably not going to call them back. So I'm either on a call or I'm going <laughs> to jump on another call in a second. <laughs> yeah. So that's definitely a weakness, but it's like, so I your weakness is probably team work. building. Yeah. No, your sure. strength. Cause I'm a solo guy, which yeah. has obviously been good to the grind exactly um, to where I'm at, but yeah. it's definitely not going to get me to you know, nice level. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was going to say it's a strength because yeah. you're probably super profitable. Yeah. You probably don't have a bunch of bull crap that you're paying for. And yeah. Which I like because I can always get back to this point and grind again. Exactly. Um, but definitely now it's a team building. Yeah. Sure. So let's see, let's build out, let's, yeah. let's build out a team, We're right? We're at wealth con. We might as well go through it. For sure. So you for sure need two acquisition people mm -hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, do you need help in the operation side? I, I feel like you do, but uh, how do you feel like? I've thought about bringing, s yeah, I don't, I think I could, I don't think right now I yeah. need help on the operation side. I okay. think if I had two established acquisitions guys, I would need help on yeah. the operation side. Yeah. Cause if I had two guys and myself do, do still doing acquisitions, we should be doing like 15 deals a month. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But then everything. But then you're gonna need help with all the f that comes yeah. with the 15 deals. No, I'm saying that's yeah. where I'll need. That's yeah. when I need somebody. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Once you have the the three, two to three acquisitions guy, I definitely think you need an operations person. Mm -hmm. um, but my contracting side is pretty good right now. It's dialed in. It doesn't yeah. take up a lot of your time. Yeah. No. Okay. So what I guess like what what has been your struggles like hiring? Cause you've been saying um, you like someone. recruiting. I don't have a good brand, personal brand. I okay. don't really like social media, but yeah. obviously social media has been a giant part of my life. Cause I wouldn't have known you guys or anything mm -hmm. without it or learned really anything about real estate investing. Yeah. So I'm trying to get a little more into that, start to build up a little bit of a, a brand or at least something somebody can search my name and see. Yeah. Um, so definitely not having that has hurt me on the recruitment side. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I need to keep building that up. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, on the personal branding side, for sure. I'd like to get better. a lot better. Got it. Do you post or no? Yeah, I post once or twice a week now, oh, okay. which is brand new. So Got it. And how past like six months. I've and how does that work? Uh, so I have a VA that edits it, but I'll either have somebody film me on a job site and we'll go over like deal numbers yeah. or I'll break down deals in the office on a whiteboard. Mm hmm. Um, and sort of just break down the basics of real estate. So how to get your first deal, what a rental is. I try and go through that more, that kind of aspect. A Got lot. it. Because I like, I do like helping people get their first rental because uh, real estate has really helped me get out of the, the rat race for sure. Yeah. What kind of deal did you work on the with that acquisition person? Um, so they're going to come on 2000 a month, 12%. Okay. But That's I'm willing good. to bump them up to 20% and zero base. Yeah. If they're okay. good, if they're good, because I yeah. want them to be, especially this first really good one. I want them to be part of the part of the organization. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and I guess like for your, who manages your rental portfolio? Um, so I have a property manager, and she's really good, but she manages like a couple hundred units. She's small. Oh really? Um, but she's really good. Mm. Yeah. So that was a big burden that I got. I pay for. Got it. And it's definitely worth. A lot of people say don't get it to like 30 units, but I did it at like 12. And it was worth it. Yeah, for sure. Well Dealing with tenants is like the worst for me. Oh, yeah. I'm not a personal person. So yeah. when they give me their life's problems, You're I don't like, oh, I'm pay sorry. the rent. <laughs> 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 what do you think as far as um, Columbus as just like a market overall? Yeah, Columbus is an amazing market. And I've worked with a lot of out-of-state investors and the reason why Columbus is so good is because of the large industries moving there so like Intel has like a bunch of data centers Google Facebook Amazon they all have multiple plants there that hire a lot of workers and those are all new so they're dumping like billions into Columbus so that's one thing that's built Columbus up a lot mm -hmm. but it's also in the Midwest so it's not a, like it's hot and cold 
Mm. So that's the reason people don't like it. But the appreciation in Columbus is going to be really stable. And it's also a cash flow market. It's not as good as like a Cleveland cash flow because you can buy junk up there for really cheap. Um, but you can still get 200 to 300 if you find the right deal in Columbus. Um, so that's what I like is it's the mixture of small cash flow, but you're still getting really good appreciation. But like, isn't it too expensive now? Because like, how much is like it's a too expensive for like you to go on the MLS and say I'm gonna buy this and do the one percent rule? Yeah, that used to be a thing. That's no longer a thing. Now you actually have to work, and I like that because that's weeded out a lot of people. Mm, yeah. Cause so I like four years, five years ago, you uh -huh. could buy something for the one percent rule on the MLS. Now, yeah. if you're doing that, there's probably a reason why. Mm. Yeah. So you have to work for it. So anything I'm keeping as a rental, I'm probably fixing up before. Interesting. I'm not buying anything turkey. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because I was looking at Columbus, like, on the MLS. Yeah. Uh, or Zillow. Yeah. And I was like, bro, everything's so expensive. I was like, I don't even understand how they yeah. can keep rentals. I would really be weary of any market. You can go, and buy, go on the MLS and buy, like, a cash flowing asset that you don't have to do anything to. Yeah. Like just because. Well, I was expecting to do something to yeah. them, but even the ones that even need the ones work. That, yeah, I know. So it's all off market. So that's mm. why I had to structure my business off market. Because there's nothing on the market. It would get uh, sold as soon as it gets on. Interesting. What do you think as far as what's like your – so let's talk about those duplexes, right? So you're buying them for 150 mm -hmm. How much rent are they going to bring in? So they're going to be in about sixteen to 1700 a side. So okay. that's 34 around. Mm. And I'm going to refi at like the 340 mark. So try and get, just get the 1% rule, and you can normally get 200 a door. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how did you get those deals? Hot, like How did I get them so cheap? Because yeah. they're old mom and pop that, well, one of them, yeah, both of them are old parents. Their children don't, don't live there anymore. Yeah. The other side, either their child of some sort lives there or nobody lives there. Yeah. Um, and it's just time for them to either just go rent a place because they can't keep up with it, and it's really nasty in both the units. I, so I've thought about moving to like an Oklahoma or like some place for like a year or two mm. just to go hard on like building that rental portfolio yeah. and then stabilizing it. Yeah. Um, Why do you think you'd have to move there? Because I feel like if I'm here, I'm just going to, I just can't get away from the flipping. And, and you can't do it here? No, it doesn't work here. The it doesn't work here at all? No, they're just way expensive. Like a fourplex here, a ghetto fourplex. Like ghetto, bad area, crap quality, uh, terrible tenants. <laughs> like it's gonna be like 500k. What's it gonna rent for? Is that nothing? It's gonna rent for like 950. Oh, that's it. A 950 door. a door. Yeah. Yeah, that's like comparable to our rents. Yeah. Columbus is a giant. Like, there's a lot of millennials renting still. Yeah. And they probably won't be able to own a place. Yeah. So so Vegas is just so expensive. Southern California obviously is like a fourplex yeah. in some areas is 950. Yeah. Like it's like not even close. Yeah. I can't, I wouldn't know how to build a rental portfolio without like pretty much burning each one. Exactly. You know yeah. That's yeah. so that's why I'm like, okay, do I go to Oklahoma or Louisville for two years? Yeah. Just I wouldn't go to crap. Kentucky. Why not? I just don't like Kentucky. Because if you go half an hour outside of Louisville, you're, it's about just a trailer park. Okay. okay. So why – so I like Columbus. I feel like Columbus is, like, surrounded, surrounded by, by trailer parks. No? It's not. No? No. Did Columbus you grow up in a trailer park? Awesome, no. no. Are I you sure? I grew up out on a farm. <laughs> Come on. <Just> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, Columbus is surrounded by Cleveland and Cincinnati, and then you got a smaller market, Dayton, that's close to it, and then you got a – Smaller market up northwest that's Akron, uh -huh. Canton. Uh -huh. So there's just a lot of small cities in Colo or in Ohio that Columbus is really insulated. But mm. I like Columbus a lot. I don't know anything about other markets, but I would not do Kentucky. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, either way, I'm just talking about I was gonna do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that would be yeah. I don't know how you do. I'm not. I don't know how you wouldn't do it if you're there without being there. But yeah, I know some people do. I know there's people that do it, but for me, dude, I'm literally yeah. – I'm a high school dropout, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm like some of these people that I need to like – I'm like a caveman. Yeah. I, I also like don't know if it's even possible because I know a lot of the California guys that buy rentals out there, and they've lost their butt. In yeah, the exactly. Years. They That's thought they were thing. buying rentals that worked, and then they have – you know, they make – they think they're making 300 a door, but they're buying a nasty property, and yeah. something goes wrong every exactly. single month. Exactly. And they can't get a property management company that's worth anything. 
So how, are, are your properties like that? Mine are all new. How are all they new? Because they're all new re- rehabbed. Mm. Yeah. So my CapEx is really low. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So That's I think where I like that model is everything that I'm keeping long term. I've fixed up. My guys did it. Mm-hmm. I know it's going to perform long term. Interesting. Yeah. So I think um, maybe I'll just do Columbus. There you go, man. There we go. Yeah. Because I'm just I like got a barn in the back. You guys. I'll stay there. <laughs> Um, okay, what else? I guess, like, talk to me about being a husband and a father. Yeah. Like, what do you think are some of your strengths and challenges as a young husband and father? Strength and challenges. Don't have a lot of strengths, a lot of challenges. Uh, No, but no, I wouldn't have it any other way. I have a lot of friends, obviously, aren't married and don't have kids. Yeah. Like, 99% of them. Yeah, I would say 23 with three kids is crazy. Yeah, no, but I love it because... In 20 years, I'm going to be 40 and have three kids that are already out of the house. So, yeah. I mean, that'll be cool to be that young. Um, but also just it really has helped my business because it makes me not be 100% on the business. Like I used to mm. just grind all day and all night. Yeah. Um, even when I had a girlfriend. But now kids, mm. I need to give them, you know, my love and teach them. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. So we're in a homeschool. We're on a farm. So oh, you that's on really a farm good. still? Yeah. So I live, I got to buy a farm right across from my parents. Luckily, the the guy passed away, but we were able to buy it and fix that property up. And we reappraised it and got all our money out of that. So we burned it just like all the other ones. Yeah. You know, it's funny. All the women in the world who are like, there's no good men. I'm like, bro, this guy's a freaking (laughs) stud. Like, holy crap. Yeah. No, but yeah, I, it's going to be really fun to have three, but we have two already. And it has definitely helped my business because I've had to structure it so that I have time for them and I'm yeah. not burning it all in. And I'm making sure that it's also um, financially safe for yeah. them long term. And that's why I do the rentals uh-huh. to make sure that I'm putting my money back into something. How, okay, strength and challenges as a husband. Strength and challenges. Um, You're married, strengths, right? Strengths, yeah. Okay, so yeah. strengths, um, so I mean, that's a lot like the team building side. I'm not emotional at all. I can help her in anything she needs, but also a weakness side. I'm not, uh, what's the word for it? I just don't. Sympathetic. Yeah, I'm not sympathetic. That's what she said. So I'm not, <laughs> but I need to be more sympathetic, but also when she needs somebody who's strong, that's, I'm good in that area. But yeah, I need to be more sympathetic. Definitely on that end. All right, I'll teach you how to be more sympathetic. All right. So I'm. Everyone in the office says I'm the most sympathetic guy. Yeah. Just so you know, I'm still going to. So what? No, actually, I can't teach you. I don't know. I have no sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think so. What? What? So I got married at 25. So mm-hmm. I was like older than you, which is crazy. But um, now what I do, right, is if my wife asked me to do something, I do it. Yeah, Before, yeah. I was like, no. No. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like anything. Like if she's like, oh, uh, I'm like halfway joking. But like, okay, when she asked me to do something now, I'm like, okay. I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to do it because I love you. Yeah. Love I just you. make sure she knows that uh. the reason I'm doing <laughs> it. Because she'll ask me to just do like cleaning and crap like that, dude. I don't care. Yeah. Like I rather my it? house be dirty. I don't care. Oh, I, yeah. I just don't want to do it. I'm yeah. like, I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. But my wife is like, she's stay at home. She's OCD. Yeah, so yeah. she loves to sit yeah. here and clean all That's day. Insane. Yeah. So, but when she asked me to do it, I'm like, I don't want to do it, but I'm like, you know what? I'll do it because I love you. Yeah. And I feel like that for sure. There you go. It sounds so crazy or, yeah. or, um, she'll, she'll tell me stuff. And sometimes I'm like, dude, I don't care. Like she'll be like, Oh, Kim Kardashian, blah, 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 blah. Or just like all this nonsense. And before I'm like, dude, just don't even talk to me about that. And then now I'll like purposely try to like give a bunch of attention. I'm yeah. like, oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. That's something I definitely struggle with because yeah. it's two different worlds. Like, exactly. I'm coming from business all day. And then, mm-hmm. and then my wife will just go off on like, oh this this actor Tyler yeah. Perry or I don't even you know. You have different things that matter. You know, yeah, like but sh- when she used to talk to me about that, I would just be like, dude, I don't want to hear it. Like that's garbage. Like yeah. literally, I was just like, that's so dumb that you're talking to me about it. Now I'm like, okay, let me just lock in for yeah. 10 minutes. And I'm you like, watch okay. watch a little more Carda- oh, Kardashians? Oh, now I actually watch the Kardashians, there dude. There, it's actually good. So it's actually a really good do. show. <laughs> 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 um, I think, yeah, just understanding that even though whatever they want to do may not make sense, yeah. but just doing it 
I think I wish I would have done that with my parents too. Like my mom and dad want to do stuff. Sometimes I'm like, bro, it's so dumb. I don't want to yeah. do it. But now just like, all right, you want to waste an hour? But And my problem is too, I would tell them. I'd yeah, be like, yeah. oh, you, you want to waste an hour? All right, let's waste an hour. Then. <laughs> but now I'm like, okay, well, let's do this hour together. Yeah, and I'm yeah, going to yeah. be really excited about it. Yeah. What was the biggest difference before having kids and after having kids for you? Because how long were you married before you had kids? Uh, Well, me and my wife got married right before we had kids. So um, biggest difference, I mean, I mean, I had my first kid at 19, so I feel like I've always had a kid. So I don't even know (laughs) what 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 it's like to not have a kid. I could say biggest difference in my lifestyle is when my mom got cancer, that's when I was just like, okay, like, like, being like doing what they want to do with mm-hmm. a smile on Being Esti- present. yeah instead yeah. of before i was just like like i felt like i was right like hey the kardashians is a waste of time yeah but like i don't need to tell them that i could just be like sure let's do it yeah. and then just like giving them their thing you know what i'm saying not i guess it's kind of selfish where it's like it always has to be what i want when yeah, i yeah. want it so just being more like all right Let's do what they want to do, even though I think it's dumb. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that, like, recently I finally learned. It took a while, though. Yeah. That's good. Another thing I learned um, <laughs> is sometimes I'll tell my wife something, and she doesn't listen. But if her friends tell her the same exact yeah. thing, she listens. Yeah, yeah. So now, like, paying attention to what her friends are telling her, I'll, t- I'll, like, I'll tell Mindy, like, hey, Mindy, like, Jessica's doing this. You should, t- <laughs> you should talk to her about it. And then she'll, like, bring it up. And, like, I've seen way more change doing that mm. than me just telling yeah. her what it is. There you go. Yeah. So have you, go you gone through that yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Our, our, we have a pretty big family. So, yeah, definitely, mm. like, if I went to them and discussed it. Yeah. Everybody would be on board rather than me. She thinking I'm coming down on her or something. Yeah. Um, to change something. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, so where do you see your career in, like, the next 10 years? Uh, yeah, so I definitely – I mean, the main goal is always sp- is spend as much time as I can with my kids. Yeah. Um, but also make a business to where they can grow up in as well and figure out a way that they can be part of it if they want to. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my goal in the next 10 years. Um, but I want to keep adding um, rental properties to the portfolio. I'd like to get into a little bit larger multifamily um, possibly, but – keep building i want to build a wholesale and flipping business that's pretty much passive without me being in it much as all but definitely want to get it to where i'm just the ceo changing things yeah top end yeah and just so we have a timestamp, so like you have 30 rentals right now how much will you make from your flipping and wholesaling company this year yeah so 30 rentals right now wholesaling and flipping company should do seven figures this year Mm. or a little bit under got it all right. Well, if people want to go for the people listening to this on Apple and Spotify, where do they go if they want to find you? Uh, yeah, go to Instagram at Charlie Scheider um, and Facebook as well, but mostly active on Instagram. Got it. Yeah. And then for everyone watching this on YouTube, we're going to put all the links of his social media in the description of this video. Um, thank you for coming on. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thanks. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. We appreciate you listening to this. See you later. Peace.